One of the skills that is absolutely necessary to the techniques of hypothesis testing is the ability to construct the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The textbook defines a statistical hypothesis as a conjecture about a population parameter. This conjecture may or may not be true. The null hypothesis is a statistical hypothesis that states that there is no difference between a parameter and a specific value or that there is no difference between two parameters. The alternative hypothesis is a statistical hypothesis that states the existence of a difference between a parameter and a specific value or states that there is a difference between two parameters. These are very technical definitions. Let's state them a little more informally. The null hypothesis is the conjecture that would be rejected if the sample statistic lands in the rejection region. The alternative hypothesis contains the conclusion that would be drawn if the null hypothesis is rejected. Now let's assume that the researchers in each of these examples have verified that the populations in each of these examples are normally distributed. Looking at example A, a researcher thinks that if expectant mothers use vitamin pills, the birth weight of the babies will increase. The average birth weight of the population is 8.6 pounds. We know from our study of sampling distributions and from the fact that the sample mean is an unbiased estimator for the population mean. that the population mean would be right here in the middle of the sampling distribution. Now the question in this example is, is the population mean going to be greater than 8.6 if this action is taken? So here's the question, will the population mean be greater than 8.6? Now let's think about what we're going to do we are going to employ a sampling technique that will provide for us a random sample. Now this sample will not be exactly representative of the population. But if this sample is of sufficient size, then we expect it to closely approximate the population. One of the things that we have to keep in mind is that we can't prove anything with a sample. The only thing that we can do is use what we know about the normal distribution or other distributions later on to draw a conclusion about the likelihood of a sample statistic acquiring a particular value when the population parameter is as we are assuming. So we're assuming that we have a population with a mean of 8.6. Now let's think about all of the things that could happen when we find this random sample and generate a sample mean. If that sample mean lands down here somewhere to the left of this assumed population value 8.6, then this would not be supported at all. The sample would not support that the population mean has increased and is now greater than 8.6. But if that sample mean lands to the right, then we would start to believe that maybe the population mean has increased by using this vitamin. But just a little bit up here to the right wouldn't necessarily compel us to draw a conclusion that the population mean is greater than 8.6 when it's very likely that we would land close to 8.6 to the left or to the right. But what would compel us to conclude that the population mean is actually greater than 8.6 is if we were to land way up here where it is very unlikely that we would land if the population mean is 8.6. 
This would be what we might call our unlikely area. It is very unlikely that we would land way up here in this tail if the population mean is 8.6. Remember that what we're using is a sample. We're going to generate a sample, find the sample mean. If that sample mean lands way up here, then we would maybe be willing to conclude that the population mean is greater than 8.6. So let's go back to what is it that the null and alternative hypotheses are. The null hypothesis is what we would reject if we land up here in this unlikely area, which we also call the rejection region. We would reject that the population mean is 8.6. The alternative hypothesis is what we would conclude in the event that we reject the null hypothesis. Well, if we land way up here, we would then conclude that the population mean is greater than 8.6. So then here would be the null and alternative hypotheses for this particular example. Note that this is a one-tailed test because we don't care about what's to the left down here when we're trying to answer a question about whether or not the population mean is greater than 8.6. All we care about is what's to the right. And since we're using a sample to draw this conclusion, we would only be willing to reject that the mean is equal to 8.6 and conclude that it's actually greater than 8.6 if we landed significantly greater than this assumed population mean.